as I said in the introduction, I, I'm the executive director from Western Watersheds Project, and uh, we're the nation's leading environmental conservation group that's working to solve the widespread problem of rangeland health issues on public lands. And so we study this uh, very closely, and we're the, the environmental community's experts on this issue. Uh, from Western Watersheds Project's uh, perspective, it's the domestic livestock, particularly cattle and not wild horses, that are the main problem causing overgrazing and damage on the native habitats across western public rangelands. I'm myself a wildlife biologist. My scientific findings on large herbivore ecology have been published in a number of international peer-reviewed journals, uh, and I reviewed the documentary Horse Rich, Dirt Poor, and have concluded that this film is a propaganda piece, not a documentary. And its conclusion that wild horses are the major land health problem rather than domestic livestock is fake news. We find it deeply offensive that the Wildlife Society is irresponsibly blaming streamside overgrazing on wild horses, when in fact it's overwhelmingly domestic cattle that are responsible for damage to trout streams and streamside vegetation throughout the West. Blaming horses for the very real damage to trout streams that threatens the survival of Lahontan La cutthroat trout today is deeply disingenuous and scapegoats the relatively rare wild horses for problems that in truth are being caused by the domestic cattle that are widespread as an environmental problem across the West. It is domestic cattle that concentrate in bottomlands and do the heaviest damage to trout streams. And the reason for this is rooted in the evolution of cattle. Cattle evolved in the boggy forests of Northern Europe. They are not suited to the arid West. Wild horses evolved in the past in arid steppe environments. Cattle can, will not graze farther than two miles from a water source, whereas wild horses can forage as much as 20 miles away from a water source. So when you're looking at a streamside riparian area that's hammered to death, like some of those streams in the film, more than likely, the overwhelming likelihood is that it's cattle that are the problem here and not wild horses causing that kind of riparian damage. In fact, and this isn't in my script, it's a little added bonus. I was once meeting with the, uh, the Ely field manager for the Bureau of Land Management, and her wild horse specialist told me that, that uh, there, was a, there was a series of allotments that had no cattle, but just wild horses. And the wild horses did as much damage to the riparian areas as winter grazing by domestic livestock. And I said, later, would you please send me this by email so I can have it in writing? because winter grazing by livestock is the best case scenario with the least amount of damage that cattle can do. And the most damage they do is when they graze in the summertime. So basically what she was admitting was that wild horses were doing at their worst what livestock grazing was doing at its best. In Nevada, domestic livestock grazing occurs in the majority of the habitat for Lahontan and cutthroat trout, occurring in more than 95% of the stream miles that are occupied by the hunt cutthroat trout and occurring on the concert on 89% of the conservation populations of the hunt cutthroat trout in, in the state. In fact, Western Watershed Project has issued several notices of intent to sue based on the damage that cattle were doing to the hunt cutthroat trout habitat. And in response to these, the Forest Service has closed livestock grazing allotments to ameliorate that damage. Western Watersheds Project is one of the nation's leading conservation groups also working on the sage-grouse issue. And the Wildlife Society's characterization of wild horses as a significant problem for sage-grouse is an irresponsible di diversion of much needed attention away from the real problem, which is once again overgrazing by cattle and sheep. Now, there is a uh, scientific publication written by uh, Beavers and Aldridge in 2011 in Studies of Ab uh, Avian Biology that shows that Wild horses are only even present on 12% of the occupied sage-grouse habitats in the West. So when you are blaming wild horses for widespread population declines, 88% of those sage-grouse habitats where those population declines are occurring don't have any wild horses at all. But they darn sure have cows and sheep. Yeah. The Trump administration's twin agenda of energy dominance and environmental deregulation send a clear message that their vision for Western public lands is to maximize private profits at the expense of the public interest. They're looking for a scapegoat. They don't want to blame the livestock industry. They don't want to blame the oil and gas industry. They don't want to blame the mining industry. 
or any of these other profit-making commercial enterprises that exploit our public lands. They want to blame something for the ecological problems that's not going to be their buddies in the big corporations, and that something happens to be wild horses in this case. Trump's appointment of extremists, extremists like William Perry Penley and Karen Bud Fallon, who reflect the anti-conservation viewpoints of Clive and Bundy and the ranching industry's so-called sagebrush rebellion, uh, to positions with no Senate confirmation and significant influence over public lands and wildlife, indicates that this is an administration with no land ethic. Mm -hmm. it, the administration's obsession with wild horses while turning a blind eye to the real and serious problems that livestock overgrazing causes on these same lands demonstrates a systematic myopia and a willful desire to ignore and perpetuate ecological pro problems that are being caused by the livestock industry and have been for more than a century. Two weeks ago, BLM Director William Perry Penley stated that the biggest issue facing the BLM was wild horses and that wild horses pose a, quote, existential threat, unquote, to BLM lands. This statement disqualifies Mr. Penley as a credi credible manager of BLM lands, particularly given the numerous and serious environmental issues facing his agency, which include the serious decline of sage grouse, which is ranging from 33 to 61 percent in different states across the range uh, over the past three to four years, and the habitat fragmentation and pollution problems caused by drilling and fracking on public lands. The removal of entire western mountaintops by the mining industry with little prospect of reclaiming the land back to natural conditions. The biodiversity crisis in which native plants and, and wildlife dwindled to the brink of extinction. The dewatering of streams for irrigation and the destruction of riparian habitats by cattle and sheep. The chronic and systematic overgrazing of federal public lands by livestock leading to a widespread invasion by flammable cheatgrass. And the extraction of fossil fuels on federal lands that leads to an acceleration of the climate crisis. These are serious issues facing the BLM. Wild horses don't even make the list. Current BLM mismanagement of domestic livestock is part of a larger global trend of the livestock industry destroying biodiversity and a purportedly science-based organization like the Wildlife Society has an obligation to be honest about the cause and nature of the livestock industry's impact. Uh, thank you very much, and I'll be happy to, to answer any questions.